There's one other thing. There's one other person who's a problem in here. It's you. You are, in fact, your own worst enemy. Um, as you can see, I've given you three bullet points on this slide. If you take the Investment Management Association's global growth sector, uh, which I take as a proxy simply because it's the one my fund is in, you'll see that in the 10 years from 2000 to 2010, they managed the, the average fund manager there turned £1,000 into the princely sum of £1,074. Not very good, eh? But then if you look at the second bullet point, you can see that's from a study done of US investors. Their underperformance that they've got, which is about 7% below market, the average mutual fund investor, is blamed upon the performance of the fund. Yes, I've mentioned that, the fact that people trade too much, they hug the index. It's based upon the fees which people charge, which are too high, and their own poor timing. People make very poor timing decisions. There are only two types of people when it comes to market timing. Those who can't market time, and those who don't know they can't market time. There is no third group, basically. Um, I mentioned at the bottom a final point, which is a thing called The Invisible Gorilla. It's uh, a book, and uh, it mentions a, uh, a clip which you can find on YouTube about the, uh, called The Invisible Gorilla. And uh, if you have a moment, look at it. It's, uh, it, in it involves a competition in which you look at a, 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 a video of a group of people, half of whom have got black t-shirts and half of whom have got white t-shirts, and they pass a basketball between each other. And your prize in the competition is one if you can count the number of passes between the white t-shirts. That's all you have to do. And so they pass the ball very quickly and you concentrate on the screen to get your cash prize. Whilst you're watching it, a woman in a gorilla suit walks across the middle of the clip doing that. And then you watch the clip and people ask you how many passes between the white t-shirts and you give your answer. And of course, you, if you've been very careful, you win the prize. Then somebody will say, what did you think about the gorilla? Half of you, if you were watching that clip, would not see the gorilla. You would say, what gorilla? A significant percentage of the half of you wouldn't see the gorilla would claim that the clip had been doctored and that there was no gorilla in the original clip. Because you're focusing so much on watching those passes, you don't see the obvious. Um, the book, The Invisible Gorilla, which takes that clip uh, as the basis of its title, has a, a number of uh, case studies in there, but one of them is an, a computer simulation of investment. And it's a computer simulation which simulates 30 years of investment, a typical investment career. And it asks you to make a selection between two portfolios, the snappily named Portfolio A and Portfolio B. You are told nothing at the outset about those two portfolios. Uh, what you don't know, because you're not told it, is that Portfolio A is an equity portfolio. It has very high returns, but it's very volatile. It goes up and down quite a lot over time. Portfolio B is a bond portfolio. It has very low returns, but it doesn't, it's not very volatile. It doesn't vary very much. But you don't know that at the outset. You are asked to choose how you want to divide your assets between them at the outset, and then on a number of periods during the 30 years. It actually takes place over a day, this exercise, but you're given 30 years of data. And all you'll get each time is the performance data that's occurred so far in the exercise, and you make a decision. Now, having read up on Harry Markovitz and understanding portfolio diversification, sensibly what most of you would do is put your assets into those two portfolios 50-50, because you know absolutely nothing about them. Then the exercise begins, but there's one other thing. The group is divided into two. The people on that side of the room are given data every five years during the computer exercise. So it's a 30-year simulation. At year five in, this, in the computer run, they get the two portfolios performance and they're given the opportunity to change their weighting from 50-50. And at year 10, and at year 15, and at year 20, and at year 25. That's it. The people on that side of the room are given data every month on these two portfolios, and if they wish, they can deal. Uh, and so they get at month one, two, three, so they get over here, you can make five decisions during the period, if you wish. You get five data points. Over here, you can make 359 decisions. Every time this simulation is run, the people over here, who can decide every month what to do, make about half the return of the people over here, who make a decision every five years. In investment, more is less. The more you look at the detail, the more you're likely to get this wrong sometimes in terms of what happens every month with every squiggle. The people who only look at this every five years can see that although the equity portfolio is volatile, it, it's a wavy line, it's a wavy line that over time outperforms the bond portfolio. So they're very sensible. They start to concentrate their investment through their decisions on the high return portfolio. The people over here who get monthly data sooner or later get a really shocking month for the equity portfolio and so they bail out at a low price. Then it goes back up and so they get back in at a high price. 
price. Then it goes back down again at some point and they bail out at a low price. By the time you've been whipsawed like that two or three times, most people don't have the emotional strength to stay with the high return portfolio. So the last thing to say about how to perform badly is you are your own worst enemy. It's not the fund manager necessarily that's your own worst enemy, it's you. You can see that if you look at this. This is basically fund flows and you can see quite clearly a correlation between the blue bars, which are the net fund flows for a period, um, and, the, uh, and the level of the market, which is the, uh, the total return line, which is the black wavy line. Quite clearly, people put more and more money in the more the market goes up and they take more and more money out the more the market goes down. This is precisely the opposite of the way to invest.